Okay, so welcome back to another Blender tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I made this glass fluid simulation in Blender. We're going to be modeling the actual glass, as you can see here, and um, I'm going to show you how to set up a domain, how to do an inflow, and how to get the sort of liquid pouring effect here, as you can see here, how to cache it all out. And uh, hopefully this is something you guys will really um, be able to learn from, really enjoy. Um, this is by no means like an absolute introduction or anything like this. This is just, you know, making something relatively fun. I'm just taking you through the process. You can see here, you know, it is what it is. And um, I'm by no means an expert with fluid simulations, but I think this result came out pretty well. So let's jump right into it. I will be putting the final blend um, file on my Patreon. If you guys want to check that out as well in the description. Uh, let's jump right into it. Okay, so with a new scene open up in Blender, let's select all of the default objects and let's just delete them. We're going to go into our front orthographic view by pressing one on the number pad. We're going to go shift A, go to your mesh options and then add in a cylinder. And with the cylinder selected, you're going to tab into edit mode and inside of edit mode, you're going to press A to select everything and then G, Z and move it up till it's sitting on the floor. If you hold in control after that move, you can snap it. So just snap it to that red line there. Um, what you can also do is enable the x-ray mode up here. Then just select these bottom faces or these um, yeah, bottom verts and then go S and just scale them down a little bit like so. And then select these top verts and go G, Z, move them up to about here and then S to scale a little bit. And then E to extrude and Z and extru just extrude it up a little bit just like that to create a bit of a lip. What you're then going to do is you're going to select these bottom verts and you're going to go control B to bevel like this and then roll your middle mouse button once or twice just to add in some more segments to the bevel. And then you can go to your face select option, select the bottom face, E to extrude, S to scale and then G, Z, move it up. E to extrude, S to scale, G, Z, move it up a little bit just to have an indentation at the bottom there. And then select the top face and then go X and delete faces. We're now going to press A to select everything. We're going to go E to extrude, then right click. And with it also active, we're going to go Alt S and scale it in, or actually let's just scale it out. So Alt S after that, and just scale it out. And let's just give it a thickness of about this much. And then what we're going to do is we're going to toggle off the X-ray. Let's just select this bottom face in the inside. Let's go Control plus or Command plus, just to go to selection to so we got all of those bottom bits selected. And then go to your front view and then let's just go into wireframe and go G, Z and move it up to about here and then S to scale. Now we have some of this thickness and this is kind of like what you'd see if you look at a lot of glass references. We're then going to go control R so we can add an uh, edge here and roll the middle mouse button to add in some more segments and then left click twice. Do the same in the inside control R and roll in a few more. About that many. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine but you guys get the idea. We're then going to tab out and we're going to go to our modifiers. So let's give this a subdivision surface modifier and uh, let's just bump that up in the viewport and let's just leave it as two under render. Let's right click and go shade smooth. Okay. Now, if you were going to make the liquid actually interact with this glass, I'd recommend you actually apply this, but because we're going to be using a separate object as the thing that interacts with the liquid, um, we're not going to be worried about that. So let's just actually make that at the moment. We're just going to tab into edit mode again. Let's just select that bottom face. Control plus to grow to selection. And we're just going to keep doing that till we selected the whole inside like this. Till we get to the top faces. Shift D to duplicate. Right click to let go and then go P and separate that selection. Tab back out and now this is a separate object. You can now get rid of the subdivision surface modifier for that duplication. Then tab into edit mode for this thing over here, the new duplication, Alt S and then scale it out along the normals like this. Okay. Now, if you go into wireframe, you can see it's a little bit thicker than the inside of the glass. And this is actually going to be the start of the thing that interacts. With all of this still selected, we're going to go E to extrude and then right click and then Alt S and let's scale it out and give that a lot of thickness like this. This is going to be the thing that is actually going to be interacting with our liquid. Let's tab out. Now we have this over here and let's go up here and call this effect. And let's just select a glass, click up here. Let's just call it glass. And now let's just also go shift a search. Let's just add in a plane 
S8 to scale it up um, eight times, press enter. Tab into edit mode and then select this edge at the back. Go E, Z to extrude up on the Z. Select this guy over here, this edge, and then go Control B to bevel. Roll the middle mouse button to add some more segments. Tab back out, right click and go Shade Smooth. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this effector thing here. And we're gonna go M and we're gonna go New Collection. Let's just call that Extra for now, okay? Let's call it that. And now we can turn that off later on when we don't wanna see it. But for now, I'm just gonna turn that off. So we now have our glass here. Um, let's just quickly also add in a quick camera as well. We're gonna go Shift A and go to Camera Options. And then you can just place your camera wherever you wanna place it. So this is not really something I'm gonna say, do it exactly like this or like that. This is um, at that point where you can change your own camera settings, your own focal length. I personally like a focal length of 95. And you can go to your um, output properties and make it 1920 by 1920, something like this. Okay, now we have a scene set up here. And let's just also go Shift A quickly. Let's add in a UV sphere. S to scale it down and then G, Z, move it up. And um, we want it about this big. And once that has been scaled, go Control A and make sure to apply that scale as well. That's important. And anything that's been scaled in object mode needs to be applied. So you can just go A to select everything. Control A, just make sure to apply that scale. So here we have um, our objects. We're just gonna actually select this sphere we added in, which is on our main collection. And let's just double click on that and call it Outflow, because this is gonna be where our um, liquid is gonna be flowing out of. Let's go ahead now and set up, um, start start doing our fluid simulation here, setting things up for that. So um, let's start by selecting this object that we've called the outflow object. Now I've actually called it the outflow. It's meant to be the inflow. So just type in inflow. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our physics um, tab, properties, and we're gonna go give it a fluid. Then we're gonna change the type here simply to flow, because that's where it's gonna be flowing from. And we're gonna come here and change the type to a liquid, obviously. And then we're gonna come here, currently it's set to geometry. We're gonna change it to inflow. Okay, pretty simple. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this effector here that we created. We're gonna give that a fluid, but we're gonna make it an effector. We're gonna make sure it's collision, which it is, and make sure the type is planar. That's gonna help with things. Um, we're now gonna actually go Shift A, add in a quick domain, so that's gonna be a cube. Now this domain is actually gonna be the actual um, simulation itself, the thing that's simulating. So we're gonna take it in edit mode, we're gonna go G, Z, holding in our um, control, we're gonna move it up till it snaps to the floor, tab back out, and then we're gonna go S and scale it till it's bigger than our effector. And we're gonna go S, Z, and scale it so it's above our um, inflow here. We're gonna go control A and make sure to apply that scale. That's really important. We're now gonna take this domain, give it a fluid, and you're gonna to go to the type, and as I said, it's gonna be a domain, and we're gonna change this to liquid. So now if we actually go to frame one, and we press the space bar, we're gonna see this. Okay, so we now have something actually happening here. You see all these little particles, I am in wireframe, um, but it's overflowing here, which is not what we want. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna select our domain and we're gonna go over to our settings and let's go down and under the time scaling here at the top, let's just change that to two. We want it to be a little bit faster. And with the resolution, we'll leave it at 32 for now, but let's just quickly go back to frame one. Let's look at the speed here. Okay, maybe that's a bit too quick. We'll go and leave it at one. So this is where you affect the speed of your simulation, okay? Uh, you guys can tweak around with that as much as you want. But what I want to do here is actually select the amount of time I want this to happen. So I'm going to select the inflow. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over to its settings. And over here, let's come to frame one. On frame one, we want it to start. So we're going to add a keyframe for the inflow. Make sure it's use, use flow. And let's go up, dragging through, till about frame 90. And it's frame 90, we want to click on that keyframe again. And then we're going to move up one frame. And at this point, we're going to untick it and then click on the keyframe. So now it should stop. Let's come and give this 150 frames. So we want this whole animation to be 150 frames long. So if we now go to frame one, select our domain. And if we now go down, we're gonna also uh, enable the mesh option here. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to come here to our end value and make it 150 frames. We're going to make sure to save. And we're also going to come here to the type and make it all. And now what we're going to do after we've saved is we're going to come here and bake all. And what it's going to do, it's going to bake in our simulation. And it's, because we enabled the mesh here, it's also going to place a mesh over it. Now, it should be relatively quick because we are going to be doing it at a relatively low resolution division, as you can see here, okay, at the very top. So let's just quickly go down and let's click on bake all and it shouldn't take too long at all. So you can see here, um, it's going in real time. I'm not um, time lapsing this. That literally only took a few seconds. And now from frame one, if we hit the space bar, in fact, you can go into solid view, you can see this filling up. Um, the only thing here is that the resolution of this is really bad. And if you see the resolution here, if you go to frame one, and um, let's just free all, free to bake, okay? You see this little cube here at the bottom? That's our resolution. That's essentially our voxel size. So the bigger this resolution is, the more chunkier, the more globby our simulation is going to look. So what you need to do with the domain here, the main thing that's going to make this look better is coming here to your resolution division and bumping it up by factors of two. So a simple little trick is you can put a little asterisk next to it and then type in two and that'll um, times it, or you can just go and type in 64, okay? So I would go with 64 as the next biggest thing. Do keep in mind, the more you bump this value up, the much, um, it's gonna take a lot more space that it's gonna be caching out, okay? It's gonna create a file where you've got your blend file saved, and this can get really big. You could actually max out your drive. So make sure you keep an eye on that. Um, but what I'd recommend now with that new setting there, you can go here and click on bake all, and then it's going to take a little bit longer, obviously, but we'll see what that resolution looks like. And then we'll keep working our way up and see what we can do. Because this one is um, a little bit longer, I'll just quickly time lapse ahead. And here we have it. It's now done at a resolution of 64. So let's see what that looks like. And you can see already it is looking a lot nicer. And what we can actually do is we can hide under our extra. We can just um, hide that and also turn it off from the render. We don't need to see that domain. And um, we just need to see it and um, what it's doing. You can also right click and go shade smooth on that um, domain that we've added in. But yeah, this is pretty much our liquid simulation. What you can do now is you can keep selecting this domain. You can go over down and free the bake. And then you can come up here and you can up this resolution division. Do keep in mind that these files can get absolutely massive. We're talking like 50, 60, 80, 100, 200 gigabytes in some cases, depending on how high you go. I've even seen people go up to a terabyte. So um, just keep that in mind. You could literally max out your um, hard drive. So what you're going to do, um, in my case, I'm going to actually free, to, free this. I'm going to leave it at resolution of 64. But what I'm going to do for now, so I'm actually going to select my um, flow thing over here and I'm actually going to come to frame one and you can see here we gave it those two keyframes or the three keyframes here for the in for the use flow. I'm just going to drag these two end ones a little bit further up so it fills the glass up a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to move it to the side on frame one. I'm going to enable auto king and just G to move it just a little bit so it automatically adds in a keyframe. Then I'm going to go to frame 60 and I'm going to go G and move it up a bit and to the side. And this is just animating with the keyframes, um, the auto keying. You can see here, we move a little bit to the side, but be careful not to go too much to the side because we don't want it to spill over. Then at frame 100, I'm going to move it over here and up a little bit. And you guys get the idea here, okay? We're just moving it around like that. So now I'm going to just untick that, but that, that should give us a, a bit of something more interesting with our flow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the domain now and maybe I'll actually up my resolution. Um, I'm gonna to go to, I'm just gonna time set by two. So that's gonna be 128. And once again, you can just type that in if you don't wanna use that little trick. And what I'm gonna do is save. And now we have that little animation. I'm gonna go ahead and bake all. Now keep in mind, you don't have to go with that sort of high resolution, but let's see what this looks like with an animation. I'm gonna go bake all. Okay, so my simulation is now done. It took about half an hour in my case, um, but you can see here at 120 um, samples or um, resolution divisions, 
um, even in the real-time display after caching, it's quite slow. But you, get, you can see here, um, it's a lot more um, detailed. I'll, if I'll hide the cup here quickly, you can see. Um, so you can see this kind of like bumpiness here. The only way you can really get rid of that is just by bumping up that resolution. And the higher you take that, the better quality you'll have. Uh, the smoother this will look and less um, blobby. And as well as like some of these other settings, one thing I could recommend you do is mess around with the um, time steps. I'd set the maximum to eight, the minimum to four. Around about that works good for me anyway. And uh, just definitely try out some different um, things with the time scale as well. If you want to speed things up a little bit, slow it down. But uh, yeah, let's now, um, I'm just gonna bring that back. Now that we have a fluid simulation, one of the next things we're gonna do is we're gonna add some materials and light the scene up. Make it look um, really nice. Because the main idea here is not really teaching you the basics of fluid simulation. The idea here is just to make a final um, rendered animation. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a texture from the internet. Um, we're gonna go to the internet and just type in on Google Images, um, seamless scratches texture. And you get something that looks around about like this, okay? Just make sure it's seamless. And um, I went through, I spent a little while doing this and I found something that, you know, um, I could use. So I'm not gonna put a link in the description just in case I'm not supposed to use it or not for a tutorial. But you guys can find one. Make sure it's kind of mostly black with a little bit of um, white across it. You know, something like this would work really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into our blend file. I'm gonna change the render engine to cycles. Change it to GPU if you have a GPU. And go down to the render and make it 70 for the max samples. And uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to your world environment or your world properties. And then you can come here and you can use the built-in sky texture if you want. Um, that'll work perfectly fine. Um, but for me, I'm just gonna go with an environment texture and um, you guys can find HGRIs online. I've got a collection of a few that I like, um, very easy to find. So, um, you know, you guys can figure that one out pretty easy. There's a lot of stuff on it. I'm just gonna go for the studio one that I like. So now if you press Z and you go rendered, whether you have the um, built-in sky texture that comes with Blender or a HGRI, you should now have some lighting. Okay, we can add in some lamps later, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select the glass, we're gonna to go to our materials, we're gonna go new, and we're gonna come scroll all the way down and we're gonna take that transmission amount and take it all the way up to one. And we're gonna to come to the IOR and make it 1.52 for the glass material, okay? That's the index of refraction. We're also gonna come up to the roughness and take that almost all the way down to zero, but not all the way. We might, um, we're gonna actually change that later anyway, but for now, let's just go Z and rendered. We can see we now have a glass material. Scroll to the top as well and go to the base color and make that value all the way to a white value. Okay, and now you're gonna select the liquid, you're gonna go new, and let's just give that a, whatever color you want, really completely up to you. But the same thing, let's give that a transmission of one. And let's take that roughness all the way down. Now, I'm just gonna quickly look up what the refractive index of water is. So, IOR of water. Let's have a look at that. So it's 1.33. So um, let's go to the IOR here and let's make it 1.33. And now that should be, um, look, we, it's a water with dye in it pretty much. So let's go Z, let's go rendered. And uh, yeah, there you can see, we now have our liquid there. You can change the color to whatever you desire, whatever you like. Um, but you know, you see where we're going with this. Um, what I'm gonna do for, for mine, I'm just gonna move my camera up a little bit just so I can see the, um, the inflow over there. However you have your setup, it might be a little bit different. But this is how I did it. And at this point, you could render this out as an animation, but I'm gonna show you how we can use that texture. So let's go to our shading workspace and select the glass. And what we're gonna do is, um, if you have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can just select your principle and then go Control T or Command T. And it'll add these nodes in here for you automatically. Um, if you don't ha have Node Wrangler, you can look up how to enable that. It's very simple, I'm not gonna cover that right now. But we want an image texture node, a mapping, and a texture coordinate. You know, you can always search and just get those ones manually. But the thing here is we're gonna click on Open and then I've already got one that I found. I'm gonna click on it and go open image. 
And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually drag this into the roughness socket, okay, of our principle for the glass material. Let's just call this glass while we're at it. So if we now go Z and we go rendered, we can actually see this is the material. I'm just gonna go Control B and in my camera view, just limit the render to make it a little bit more efficient. Maybe even a little bit smaller. Control B and just drag a render um, box. And what you can do here is you can actually go Shift A, search and type in color. Get a color ramp and then place it between the image and the principled. And now you can hone in these values, right? So I might drag, in my case, um, the white down quite a bit. And depending on what sort of image you're using, it could be a bit different for you, but I'm going for something along these lines here to make kind of like a glass with some scratches, a bit of wear. And depending on what image you're using, um, it could be a little bit different. But um, you get the idea here, we just want some scratches. Now the one thing you're gonna have to do as well is go here and change it to box projection and then change it to generate it. So we don't have to use UV um, unwrapping. It's just doing this procedurally. Okay, so um, let's now go Control B, drag it over the whole window for the camera um, viewport rendering. And just make sure you save. Let's go, um, you know, I'm just gonna get a section that I think looks good, something like this. And I'm gonna go render and then go render image and let's see what that looks like. And uh, there we have it. There is the render and you can see this glass material looks pretty cool. I really like the way that comes out. So uh, what we're gonna do now is um, we're gonna just close that. And one more thing I'll show you. So if you select the floor or the background plane, you can go new. And this is something really cool. I just went um, and added the, the nodes, the image texture with the exact same mapping and texture coordinate like we did for the, um, for the glass. So we're gonna also make that generated into the mapping. And we're also gonna make it box. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go new and let's just um, leave, leave the resolution as it is, the width and the height, but let's come here and make it um, UV grid and then go okay. So now if we press Z and we go rendered, we can see we have this grid and you can leave it as colored, but what I like to do is go shift A, search, get a color ramp, put it in between here, and then just take this darker value and make it a little bit lighter. And I kind of really like this sort of look. You can now go here to the scale and change that to whatever you want. I might make it lower, like 0.2. And that's just a really nice kind of background. You don't have to do that, but I think that looks really cool. On top of that, you could actually go Shift A, quickly add in a cube, empty, take it to the front and then select your camera and then give it a depth of field, select that empty. Once again, this is totally optional and make it a lower value on the f-stop. And now you have a focal point it'll make the background nice and fuzzy, right? So now you have that kind of depth of depth of field going on there, a nice shallow look. Um, but that's optional, that is gonna increase your render times, but you guys get the idea here. Um, what I'm gonna do now is just one more time, just maybe change the color of my liquid here that I have and find something that I like. I think that looks pretty cool. I'm gonna make sure to save. And now what we have to do is go to your render go to your output, go to desktop or whatever, wherever you like to save this. And then you can, um, you know, like you can make it an FFmpeg video format, you can make it PNG sequences, uh, create a folder, export all those sequences, and then you can compile it together. Um, there's a lot of videos on how to render out your final animation, but this is kind of how I did this. So if you guys wanna try and muck around with this, go ahead. I will upload this to Patreon, but I won't be able to upload the cached out data because it's so massive. This is almost a gigabyte big that it won't. I won't be able to put it on um, Patreon. I might actually re-cache um, this as a smaller simulation and then um, upload it again, uh, upload it to Patreon that way so you guys can kind of check it out. But um, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. See what you can do and uh, have fun.